So when we get Sister Mary up in here talking about how the only hope for the whole of <clears throat> for the whole of, of the planet is a global goddamn exorcism of patriarchy, that's what the fuck it means. That's what it looks. That's what it looks like. These crossings of the threads of time, these increasing synchronicities that she talks about. Once our minds are unmuddied and our wits are sharpened, once we start to pull away the layers and layers, not just in our lifetime, the layers that we inherited from our mothers and our fathers, the layers that they inherited from their mothers and their fathers, years and years, 6,000 years of layers of patriarchal madness imposed on our motherfucking consciousness. And she's saying, even as we got 6,000 years of layers of this bullshit infecting our fucking blood, laying in our, she says it, laying dormant in our fibers, deep in the substance of our bodies. Because if it's in our blood, where our blood come from, where our blood is generated from, our bones, our marrow, deep, deep, deep within us, this shit. And even still, it does not take much for the old blood. For the, what is it? For the tidal rhythms of the forgotten race of women lay dormant in our old blood when we begin to sense the throb ah, of the old blood. Huh? The throb, that's what she says, the throb of the old blood. Once some book comes into our cipher, seemingly out of nowhere, and says, this is what you need in this moment. Mm -hmm. When some woman crosses paths with you, and it seems like, quote, a coincidence, and even as she's saying something funny, spirit is saying she is in your life for a reason. Listen. Hmm. As the blood begins to purge this shit. <sighs> Baby. As the blood begins to purge this madness. What does she say? The throb of the old blood. The cries of the tidal rhythms of the forgotten race of women start kicking your fucking ass in your dreams, in your wake. Child, I'm minding my own motherfucking business with an attitude, driving home from a closed library, so I got to rearrange my whole motherfucking day. And out of nowhere, all these thoughts at one time in an instant come down on me. I remembered when Mary, not Mary Daly, when um, Barbara Moore, talks about ancest the ancestral significance. The ancestral significance. Oh, and you know what? Who else said it? Oh, um, Barbara Moore and Barbara Walker, because Barbara Walker started going off about the sacred secretions. Huh? About the sacred secretions of the woman's vagina and how it was seen as a heel of here. What did I say? I made the joke. Because it said that the sacred secretions of the woman was highly valued and known throughout the lands for its restorative properties. That the, that the, that the orgasmic secretions of a woman's vagina could heal blindness, child, and cure leprosy. So I'm thinking in the car, this is all in my drive home, y'all. I'm thinking, damn, what is it? What is the key denominator? Because now women are sick. Women are sexually sick. Women are sexually sick. We are more predisposed, women, to, uh, to STDs than males are by virtue of anatomy. So why is it our, our, our um, sacred secretions can't heal ourselves? I said, what is... What is the secret? What is the key ingredient? And it is our misery that has made our previously healing secretions toxic. It, why? Why would I say this? Because we are carrying around tumors and fibroids and cysts and clots and painful periods. What is it that, uh, that Barbara Walker said? That many do not understand. 
because of what? Sexual taboos. That intercourse during menstruation is one of the best ways to heal what ails women that we call PMS. But because the sexual taboos are so strong against menstruation, that it is rare for women to be able to seek the release needed during their menstruation through sexual intercourse, which is actually ancient blood ritual. I said, damn. I said, so is it because our emotions have our deep, deep, visceral emotions have turned what used to heal humans into something that works against us now right so i'm like damn because y'all remember i made the joke when she was talking about how the sexual the sexual secretions meaning the orgasmic uh the uh the orgasmic ejaculate of women could heal heal leprosy and cure blindness and shit this ain't my opinion this was in the book this is what the book said you feel me i was like yeah so li listen Next time, stop being a punk and let a bitch come in your eye. <laughs> you understand? I made, the, <laughs> I made the little comment, you know, like let a bitch come in your eye. See what happened, right? But sex itself has become something that is not sacred. It's not sacred. Remember I told you how the priest in the temples of Sekhmet used to heal humans by them coming and making offering at the feet of the goddess and then sitting upright in lotus position in front of the priests of the temple, the female priests of the goddess, while she lay on her back and stroked her clitoris while chanting incantations, prayers on behalf of the petitioner. And what they were required to do was stare into the universe, her vagina stare into her uterus, stare into her vagina as she climaxed while chanting incantations to the goddess on their behalf. Hmm? I'm thinking about all this in a 30 minute drive home. You understand? All of it. Everything I just told you. That was my, those were my thoughts. This weekend, the temple service, this Saturday, that thing that happened in Lamert Park that blew my, that peeled my fucking wig back, y'all. The seizure of power. I'm going to do another live. I'm going to call that live um, the, the importance of naming and renaming everything part two, because that's what I did on Saturday was part one. But it had me thinking about why I've, I've thought about it before, but this is what concretized it. Why we as women take men's last names within the contract of marriage. And how we forget our mothers when we do that. We forget their names. I don't know any of my ancestral mother's last names. I don't. I know my father's ancestral last names. I know all of my father's ancestral last names, both sides of my family. We do not know who was the beginning mother of us all in our particular bloodlines. What was her, quote, maiden name? the importance of naming and renaming everything and i'll tell y'all a story on saturday about the closing out the conclusion of a chapter that i started years ago with transitioning away from my african name and taking back the name that my mother gave me in birth and seeing the listen not seeing hearing the retrieval of the power that i gave to this african who gave me my name hearing in his voice the frustration when i said no it's not iapo anymore it's cassandra oh <laughs> okay the importance of naming and renaming everything redefining all phenomena this man that i watched in this interview today this former israeli soldier turned ally exiled ally to Palestinian people saying, I don't give a fuck what y'all heard, what y'all see on TV. I know what it is. I was raised in Israel. I was born in Israel. I was a soldier in Israel when I was two, because that's the conditioning that happens through our entire lives that allows us to become enthusiastic perpetrators of terrorism. 
he renamed himself in that moment. Do you see? He renamed his, he regained power over his consciousness in this transition from former self to new self, from old self to evolved self. He said, I, I had a choice to make. I had to evolve. I had to rename myself. That's what he did. That's what he did. He renamed himself. Happiness. What does this have to do with the female ejaculate? <laughs> what does this have to do with the female magical powers of orgasmic ecstasy in service to the goddess? It is all connected. It is all connected to say that women are going to change the world, to say that our only job when we incarnate as women is to change the world. That's our only job. It is our only assignment that anyone that incarnates male, and I'm talking about biological identifiers, period. I'm not, I'm not talking about gender gender um gender constructs and identifiers i'm talking about the moment that we are born whoever we are male or female before we have an understanding of who we may be in terms of gender when we are born we have one assignment all of us have one assignment all of us have one assignment it is to change the world it is to play our peculiar world in the evolutionary process that is always emerging as we live as our peculiar expression in this life to make the world better than what we left it. That's everybody's assignment. For those of us born female in this incarnation, our job, our assignment is to completely, completely reconstruct the entire shit. The whole motherfucking thing cannot nothing survive from the old age. Not all of us got the motherfucking dope. That's the work that we have to do. As men, as, let me correct that statement. As males who incarnate in this life, you have one assignment. Only one that is all. Don't care what your cultural background is. Don't care what your religious beliefs are. Don't care how you was raised. You have one assignment. To support and execute the radical transformation of the world through the enthusiastic, willful compliance to the mother that's all that's it that's all that's all take all the noise out the way take all your political understanding out the way take all your cultural traditional uh norms out the way that's the assignment the enthusiastic willful ecstatic execution of the mother's will in real time who is the mother we fucking are we are the mother, the mother, we are. So those of us who have been doing our own personal healing work, those of us who have been engaged for any significant period of time of deconstructing the 6,000 years of conditioning and infection of patriarchal fucking malignancy whose blood huh who 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 is has been invigorated by the throb of the old blood who has been charged and moved by the title the title rhythms of the race of women this is the assignment this is the job hold on one second <laughs> This is the assignment. This is our only work. And to create a process for those of the, for those out there, the many who have not started this work, who have not started the deconstruction, who have not yet been moved by the tidal rhythms of the forgotten race of women, who do not yet feel or sense the throb of the old blood within themselves, the work is for us to assist in that, not to condemn, not to belittle, 
not to humiliate. Why don't you understand this yet? Why ain't you there yet? None of that. It is not to do that. It is to perpetually plant seeds in those that have been made blind. Those who are suffering from the same 6,000 years of conditioning that we suffered from. That just yesterday, we was backwards as the day is long. Just yesterday, we didn't know a motherfucking thing about the moon and the rhythms and, the, and our relationship to the earth. We didn't know nothing about frequency and the power of our throat to make real in the world, to create a material force from seeming abstraction. We didn't know nothing about that. Just yesterday. We was backward as the day is long. Just yesterday. So we have to have enough, enough empathy and enough vision of the future that in real time, we can perpetually plant seeds, perpetually plant seeds that awakens the tidal rhythms huh, of the forgotten race of women that begins to stimulate the throb of the old blood. The mother will do the work. All we have to do is be open to her intervention in our life. We have to be open to her intervention in our life. We have to be able to see when she puts something before us that is to feed our soul. We have to be able to hear whenever something strikes at the heart of us that may not make sense yet. Why are y'all all here? Why y'all keep tuning in to me? I ain't got no fancy shit on my screen. You feel me? I ain't got no like little videos I'm playing off to the side, a little cute like little you know, word things popping up on the screen for the last three and a half years. It's been me. Sometimes my hair did, sometimes not. Sometimes I got makeup on, sometimes I don't. You understand? Sometimes I done changed clothes um, from the day before. Sometimes I have not. It's just been me yakking at y'all for three years, reading books to you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Cracking jokes. Cussing like a sailor for three and a half years, almost four years now. Why do you return? Why do you come back? Why do you lay on these videos with me? We, our temple service yesterday was three hours long. And do you know that was almost 100 people for the whole ride, for the whole walk? I was like, man, I lost everybody. <laughs> I lost about a board y'all to death. Why are you here? Why do you return? Because in the sea, in the sea of information and opinions, and there are no shortage, a hundred million content creators on YouTube with fabulous content, fabulous videos, very professional that y'all could be watching. Why do you return here? Why would you sit with me for three hours on a Sunday when you could be doing anything to listen to me talk to you about the mother? To communicate to you what I've received in ceremony as a mission that is possible for all of us. Every last one of us have the ability to show up and change the world. Every single one of us. To know it so, so, to not believe it to know it in my blood, to know that the, the moment that we are in right now as adult, conscious, thinking human beings is really a gift. It is a gift to be alive right now, conscious, thinking, hearing, feeling. It's a gift because we have all been charged with the same task, baby. Our assignment is the same. Our destinies are linked. Our destinies are linked. I say it all the time. They may manifest themselves in 8 billion peculiar ways, our destiny. It might be that the way the mother speaks through you as an instrument, which you are. You are her. You are a part of her. You are one with her. You are her very peculiar and necessary, beautiful personification of herself. So when you make music, when you paint a mural, when you dance and someone is struck in the heart by that which you have done, they are responding to your peculiar expression of the mother in real time. She is speaking through you all the time. 
Our art is her breath. Our art is her movement. Our art is her attempt to win us back to her. To make clear in a seat of madness that she is with us and has never left. That we are not alone in the world, that she is always with us. She is always with us. That there is nothing, listen to me about your mama. There is nothing that you need to do or perform to win her favor. She said yes to your life. And for that reason alone, she chose you. I love you. This is the evidence of it. I want you not only to live, I want your living to be happiness and ecstatic and erotic and pleasurable. I want you to experience the love that I felt in my blood and in my bones and in my body when I said yes to your life. When I allowed you to be born through me, the love and the ecstasy and the magic of the moment. What did Ruth say? My mouth is enlarged over my enemies. I have never felt the rush and the quickening that I feel now when I am born as mother by giving birth to the one that petitioned me. Unlike your aloof, faceless, ridiculously evil father who just loves brigandage and war and shit and wants you to do all this crazy shit to prove your allegiance to him. You want to fast, you got to pray, you got to not have sex for 100 years, you got to do all this terrible, 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 terrible shit. You have to suffer to prove that you love God. You have to suffer. That's what the Bible says. You got to carry your cross to show me that you love me. You got to suffer. What is it? What the Bible says? It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the gates of heaven. I want you to suffer. That's how you prove how much you love me. I want you to be a slave. Slaves, worship your master. Obey your masters so that your life will be well in the afterlife. Your mother has not asked you. She ain't asked you none of that shit. She ain't asked of you none of that madness. She says, baby, the way that you worship me is get the fuck up off your knees. Raise your eyes to the sky. Hold your hands up in dance while, while moving your hips. While making love to your partner. While hugging your children. While playing for no other reason than just to enjoy that which I have given freely. The only way I want you to worship me is in ecstasy, in bliss, in happiness, unimaginable. I'm not interested in anything else. I do not, I'm a mama. I don't wanna see my babies crying. I don't wanna see my baby's feelings hurt. It hurts me when my babies are hurt. It hurts me when my babies are sad, especially when I feel like there's nothing that I can do to remedy that. You know how it is when you got a little baby and you're doing everything. You're like, baby, what you need? I don't understand. I done changed the diaper. I done fed you. I done birthed your baby. What's wrong? I'm hurt when my baby is hurt. I am sad when my baby is sad. The only thing I am interested in in that moment is how to make my baby happy. And the mother gives us that all the time. She's like, damn, you ungrateful motherfuckers. I done gave y'all everything. I give y'all free air, free food. That the, you know that your father guy make you pay for, but I gave it to you for free. You feel me? Um, I you don't have to buy drugs to experience my face. All you gotta do is have sex. Wonderful, reciprocal, beautiful love making that is centered in love just because you exist, not because we booze, not because we partners, because this is even love that ex should exist between strangers. When uh Barbara Walker talks yesterday about one of the greatest gifts to women at that time who had sexual sovereignty was to be able to make love to a stranger in the temples of the goddess. This was the way that she and he were able to see the face of the God in real time was through sexual union and orgasmic ecstasy. This is how you sought the face of the mother. She's like, bitch, I, I gave y'all all the clues. I just want y'all bitches to be happy all the time. That's all I want. That's how you worship me. I want y'all to be happy. And y'all do everything but. Y'all do everything but because this bullshit and ass mythological father God that convinced you that suffering 
is your lot in life. That everything I gave to you for free, you must pay for. You must earn love. You must earn the right to live. You must earn joy. You must earn happiness. And your proximity to your ability to earn those things is what will guarantee you, quote, happiness. If you can't pay for those things, then you can't have those things. Happiness, love, respect, honor. Mm -hmm. That's what we teach ourselves. Is that the only way a motherfucker can respect you is your proximity to wealth and abundance. That those are the only people entitled to, to recognition, adoration. Huh? This is not even what I wanted to talk to y'all about. I just came up in here. You feel me? To talk to, <laughs> to read a little to y'all before I, I have to work. You feel me? But I'm gonna tell you this this little this little passage here that this, this shit touched me to my soul when she says we are a race of women that of old knew no fear and feared no death and lived great lives and hoped great hopes. And if today some of us have fallen on evil and degenerate times, there moves in us yet the throb of the old blood. The more distinctly a woman remembers the tidal rhythms of the forgotten race of women, and the more surely she senses the throb of the old blood, the more certainly she is forced to face the unnatural programmed reflexes that she has inherited as a woman in patriarchy. Baby, so we only read three paragraphs today because <laughs> she was on me. You feel me? So y'all go to my Facebook page, Cassandra Faye Floyd, because I, I now I'm really it's crunch time now. Go to my Facebook page, Cassandra Faye Floyd, and um, look on my look on my main thread because I posted that video with the brother who was the former Israeli soldier. That shit is powerful, and it was right on time today. It moved me so I've been really trying to sidestep letting so much of that that the talk about what's happening in the Middle East get into my consciousness. It's a lot. It's a lot for me to bear right now. And, they, and they're doing it in such a gruesome and pornographic way, you know, and that shit is to demoralize human beings. I'm not saying that we should not know what is happening in Palestine, but the only thing that they are showing is the bodies of Palestinian children and women and men. I, I that is snuff film shit. It's, it's, the, it's no different than what happened on slave plantations when they would brutalize black people for trying to run away in front of the group to ensure that nobody else resisted, that nobody else rebelled, that nobody else ran. The kind of gruesome ass terroristic shit they did in a sea of hundreds, torturing and brutalizing human beings to terrify anybody else from standing on the right side of the question, from showing up in the right way. And so I've had to be very mindful of what I allow into my cipher, being aware, not being a bypasser, being aware, but also protecting my spirit while we do the work it is we're charged to do. Do you understand? So this, this, this video that this brother posted today, it moved me. It moved me. And he wasn't going off. He was very calm. He was very succinct. He was very clear. I am clear that brainwashing was what happened to me. I am clear that brainwashing is what is happening to all Israeli people living in Israel. No different than the brainwashing that occurred under the Third Reich that had us in the situation that we in in the first place. And it was my responsibility that once my spirit spoke to me and said, what I am doing is not right, that even if it meant exile from the land I was born in, that I had to do the right thing. So he's been exiled from Israel since he came forward in his in uh, in his opposition to the Israeli state and um, and the crimes and terroristic behavior of the Israeli state. He's like, it don't matter. My spirit wouldn't allow me. My spirit wouldn't allow me. Uh, my spirit wouldn't allow me to do anything other than what I did. So go on to my Facebook page, check that video out. If you're interested in it and can't find it, just let me know. Email me at releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. I'll email you the link. Um, if you are interested in participating in the uh, the Zoom workshop, to, uh, the Zoom meeting tomorrow for the building of the, the first event of the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence, email me at releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. Make sure you put event committee in the, in the subject header 
If you are interested in participating in the book club study that we're going to start on Wednesday for Pure Lust, email me at releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. Make sure you put book club in the subject header. I'm telling you because a lot of shit has been getting lost in spam. So please put a, a subject header in the subject header. And um, also you can make contributions and donations to the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence. For those of you tuning in via Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, you can see that information scrolling across the bottom of the screen. So I'll leave this up a little while longer. That's PayPal, Zelle, Venmo, and Cash App. For those of you who are tuning in via IG, I still have to figure out a way to like show you by demonstration how you can make a contribution. But in the meantime, if you would like to contribute to the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence, find out more about what the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence is, please email me at releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. I will respond before the end of the evening. I do have to go. I got to go work now. But um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for allowing me to vent for a little bit. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for the continued reading of Pure Lust, Elemental Fe Feminist Philosophy by Mary Daly. Pure Lust, Elemental Feminist Philosophy by Mary Daly. My name is Cassandra Faye Floyd, also known as the Daughter of the Fates founder of the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence, and I will see y'all tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Y'all have a good night. Be bountiful, be blessed, be prosperous, all aligned with justice. Peace.